I'll start off with a summary and then go into a deeper dive. No monitor is ideal right now. You're sacrificing one thing for another. The choice depends on what pisses you off more. You also cannot really pay more for a better monitor. The $200 VA monitor I settled on is better than the $500 240Hz IPS monitor I tried. I played competitive FPS for many years, but recently have been playing casual, visually appealing games, so I wanted to sacrifice ultimate response for improved image quality. With VA, you get the worst response times, but best image quality, especially for dark scenes and blacks, but the best VA monitor I was able to find has a smearing problem on high contrast areas when panning, such as black numbers on a white clock. This is likely due to the low black to white response time, which moderately reduces its prowess for darks. TN response times are fairly overrated, but it does mean they don't have that annoying smearing, but they do look significantly worse overall. IPS is a scam. IPS glow ruins a large percentage of the screen. The only thing IPS does well at is accurate colors, which is trivial to most people. Only a tiny percentage of people should need IPS if they need super accurate colors for something specific. And even then, one third of their monitor will be inaccurate due to IPS glow. Some say IPS has the best viewing angles, but my $200 VA has much better viewing angles than my $500 IPS. IPS has the same washed out look as TN due to having similar slash same contrast ratios. My $500 IPS monitor had the same 1000 to 1 contrast ratio as the TN monitors I used. And IPS glow makes it look even more washed out. If you do decide on a TN monitor, I'd recommend looking for the one with the best viewing angles and blacks, and the least backlight bleed and other defects. Which that is, I have no idea, but it's not the highly rated XG2402. The differences in response times among TN monitors are trivial. Even for highly competitive gamers, you could easily go pro with a VA monitor. Panel response time only really matters when it manifests as obvious phenomena such as the smearing slash flickering of high contrast areas during movement on the VA monitor I tried. There's a big difference when going from 60Hz to 144Hz, but the difference between 144Hz and 240Hz is barely noticeable, if at all. Though the 240Hz monitor I tried was an IPS, and I've read that they are worse at 240Hz than TN monitors. All the 144Hz and 240Hz monitors I tried had similar levels of motion blur. I don't notice anything wrong with 1080p at 27 inches. Everything's just bigger, which is what I wanted. The larger size feels more immersive, and I don't buy the arguments I've seen saying 24 inches is better for competitive gaming due to having the full screen and vision. My peripheral view has no problem with 27 inches. If anything, you can just move the larger screen further back, which is also more convenient and better for your eyes. The image is slightly less crisp, but it's not a big deal. And people saying things like Pixel City are spreading misinformation or got a bad monitor. You have to look extremely close to notice individual pixels. In my opinion, 1440p and higher are not worth the increased costs they require in a graphics card powerful enough to run them at high FPS. It results in your graphics card costing more than the entire computer that could run new games at high FPS on 1080p. The top review sites can be unreliable which makes picking a monitor out of the 100 different possibilities even more tedious. I settled on a $200 27-inch 1080p 144Hz VA monitor after testing many options. The high contrast smearing slash flickering doesn't occur in enough areas to make it a worse problem than the issues with these other monitors. And the medium amount of motion blur on the other monitors has a similar impact as the smearing slash flickering in that it forces you to not focus your eyes while panning, so that maybe nullifies slash evens out the VA issues a bit. Onto the more detailed part, I'm sticking with images because even the professional reviewers that use expensive cameras aren't able to capture the phenomena that they describe, so I'm not even going to try. 
I did feel that when I upgraded from my 120 hertz Samsung 2233RZ to my 144 hertz BenQ XL2411Z, it was a significant upgrade overall, but that's probably because the BenQ monitor was better in many ways. My $200 BenQ XL2411Z that I used for many years was fine, except the blacks. The panel lottery is really bad though. I got lucky to get a pretty good all-around 2411Z after RMAing a previous one. I only wanted to upgrade because that monitor didn't have a display port, which I needed for my new graphics card. I read that the ViewSonic XG2402 was better than the XL2411Z, so I got that as a replacement. I was very unhappy with the terrible viewing angles, to the point where there is no distance or angle you can sit at from the monitor for it to display properly. It was similarly as bad as IPS Glow. The contrast ratio was also noticeably bad, resulting in a very washed out look. It also had significant motion blur that was quite annoying. I read and saw that higher refresh rates decrease motion blur and that motion blur reduction technologies have a variety of downsides. So I resorted to paying more for a better monitor and I opted to go for 240 Hz in order to decrease motion blur. Unfortunately, the ability to pay more for a better monitor doesn't seem to exist yet. I saw a list of the best 240 Hz monitors and the number one was the $500 Acer Nitro XV273 IPS. Well, I tried two of them, and the IPS glow on them was horrendous, to the point where it makes me mad that people are recommending IPS monitors at all. You can see from a web search that IPS glow is normal for IPS monitors. I was not impressed with the colors. They're fine, but they don't seem any better than my BenQ XL2411Z. TN. The gamma is more accurate when using specific calibration images to test it, but during normal use it's not noticeable. What is noticeable are the horrible blacks due to IPS glow. On a black screen it changes drastically from black to gray depending on the angle I'm looking at it from, and there's no angle even straight on where the screen is uniformly black. This poor viewing angle problem is a major reason I want to replace my XG2402 TN, but this isn't any better. Changing the brightness doesn't do that much except for putting it to zero helps a bit. You can get it to go away if you stand 6 feet away at the perfect angle. Anything other than that and the blacks on the monitor look horrible. Any dark image slash game is ruined slash terrible. In game, the IPS glow plus having to lower the brightness to reduce the glow combined to make the picture slash colors look really washed out. Only thing wrong with my BenQ XL2411Z TN was the blacks in games and the viewing angles when your head dips below the monitor, i.e. when watching movies in bed, and this is absolutely not better at either of those. I discovered that VA was what you want if you're willing to sacrifice ultimate TN response times for better image quality. Well, the VA I got was nice indeed, but due to the slow response times, it has noticeable smearing slash flicker on high contrast areas, which kind of ruins its prowess on darks slash blacks. The first one I got had significant backlight bleed too, which also contributes to ruining darks slash blacks. Thankfully, the replacement monitor had less backlight bleed. The screen does also pick up a good deal of glare, so behind you needs to be pretty dark. The weaknesses of this monitor are most obvious in specific examples, such as a chain link fence in a darkish area, a bookshelf with multicolored books. When panning, the fence will get darker and the bookshelf will kind of flicker. Turning up the gamma reduces the effect. The overdrive setting doesn't seem to have a major impact on this. Using any of the preset profiles will make this much worse. Viewing angles are much better than my TNs or IPS. So back to BenQ then, right? If I was happy with my XL2411Z, then this much newer monitor, BenQ XL2731, should be an upgrade, right? Unfortunately not. It has the same terrible viewing angles as the XG2402 yet it is tuned worse and has worse black 
slash backlight uniformity. You can see the terrible viewing angles and backlight uniformity in the pictures. For the tuning on both AMA High and Premium, I noticed a significant amount of overshoot on tree trunks in the nighttime fireside Tomb Raider scene I loaded. I didn't notice it in Titanfall 2 or Arabelle, a high contrast dark game, so I settled on the VA monitor.